Welcome to part 29 of the XC Restoration and this chapter is dedicated to Andy from the Ford Forum. He's been very generous indeed and donated some parts. I'll get into that in a moment. Um, he's known as SSV POM on the forum. Uh, next chapter at number 30 will be Ben from New Zealand. He's done something as well, but I'm not really, I'm not really sorry, ready to, to showcase that. So this is quite a long chapter. There's a bit of detail I've gone into on uh, fitting out the engine bay. Some of this stuff might drag on a little bit. You can flick through it. That's long. At, did I mention 42 minutes or something? Um, also, in the last video, I talked a bit about Patreon. I wasn't sure how to set up rewards and all this sort of business. Susie told me off. Wifey had a go at me. She said, you can't do that. So I've left the video there, but I want to also articulate that those people that contribute have been getting, well, they've got one, <laughs> I've only got one, um, a video that sort of goes into what's coming up, a bit of behind the scenes stuff, that sort of stuff, how I make the movies, that sort of thing. And of course, I'll be answering questions that they post um, that comes up in the, on the Patreon page, if that makes sense. So they'll be aware of some of the stuff that's in this chapter. Of course, it's not a complete spoiler. There'll be other stuff in there as well. But um, that's what I've decided to do to set up as a, as a, as a reward for now. So if you're interested in um, seeing what's coming up and a bit of stuff that's sort of relevant to the car as well, uh, that'll be on your Patreon page. It'll be, you'll get a notification. So this is part 29. Hope you enjoy. And of course, Andy has come through with a few parts, which is so well appreciated. Now, I've been looking for headlights and buckets and all sorts of things for this car for the two years I've had it. And every now and then, very rarely, you'll see trashed items coming up for $500 and all this sort of stuff. People ask a huge amount of money for this. And of course, I will give back to Andy, return to him what I don't use. And I'm thinking at this stage, I'll be using two of the lights and also two of the buckets. But you can see, here's a lovely grill, and that's... That's in incredible condition. These are always broken. A um, couple of headlights here, notable ones. This one's got a Lucas label on it, and it's in very good condition. A small amount of re-silvering, um, and the same here. Of course, there's three others to choose from. But not only that, he also came through with a pair of um, headlight buckets, and they're immaculate, absolutely immaculate. So of course, I will be able to use those too, which is incredible. Very, very hard stuff to find. Um, in addition, there's a, a lens, of course, that looks new old stock. I don't think it is, but it looks at it's in amazing condition. And the surround as well. So I'd like very much to say thank you to Andy for this. This is an incredible act of generosity. I've given away things in the past and always regretted it. And... Um, you know, to, to, to actually do this is, is amazing because it's a, it's a valuable kit and it's very hard to get and it's very expensive too. So thanks again, mate. It's so well appreciated. Right, so I've been sifting through some of these parts. Of course, this housing, as we mentioned in the last video, is pretty well cactus. I've taken the studs out of it and they're just a sort of a, a splined um, stud, if you like, that are pressed in uh, to the housing from the other side. Now, the best thing to do with that would have been to have it plated. It would look a lot better and it's sort of got surface rust on it doesn't look very nice so I'll put that to one side and I've picked the best of the parts now this one here for example I'm going to polish this by hand just with a bit of automotive polish then clean it off with prep sole and just mask off and paint those black parts there's only like three of them I think I'll be doing the side as well so that's all good and of course the lenses are all good out of the two other ones I've got, and I've got this gasket set, which is basically your two housing gaskets and your two lens gaskets. They come with a strip of framing material, I guess you'd call that in the centre. Great to keep that stuff, because it's good if you're doing work on heater boxes and stuff like that, for the heater cores, and also around fan motors and that sort of thing, the ducting. I always keep that rubber, it's handy to keep. And so, I'm just going to try and whack one of these, and there's a lens. One of the lenses I don't have to touch, that's got some scratches on, so we'll just, you can see there, the light reflection is not great. But um, it's a good lens, it's a lovely, lovely lens, so it's very usable. So, what I'm going to do, is I'm going to just punch these in. Now there's two studs missing out of this one, I think. There's one there and one there. And so I'll just use two of these old ones. Some people probably wouldn't agree with this, but I'm just going to 
drill them out just a tiny, tiny bit because if I press these in, old plastic has a way of cracking. And these need to be cleaned up a bit. There's a bit of gunk on there, but my wish is to, yeah, that's much, that's nice actually. So I might just put a bit of um, hot glue around there, just around the spline, and then just press it in like that. And I think it's just, look, it's not the right way to restore it. The right way would have been to have these plated and we press them in very, very gently, but these crack so easily, it's ridiculous how easy they're going, to, they're going to break. So I've elected to do it the wrong way. So I'm not saying do it my way because even I reckon I'm wrong. That one's a little bit stiffer, but it has been drilled, so it's cool. So I'll just put that up on a socket. At least I'll try and just put a bit more of this crap on. Those hot glue guns, every time I see a bloke using them, there we go, that's nice. Now that's not going to go anywhere. Every time I see a guy using one of these, I think of those dangerous projects those overseas blokes do. But anyway, look, that's going to sit. And the reason I didn't want to muck around with the studs too much is the threads are really good. And these screws, these nuts, sorry, do go down them very easily. So there we have that thing all restudded, it's fine. So I'm going to take all this goop off. That looks like it's got a mastic on it. Um, you can put these in dry with the new gas gas. So I'll go in, I'll clean that up and I'll come back. Right, well I've given this a little bit of a clean up. Um, and a bit of a paint job on the inside. Just very, very lightly. Literally just dusted it on. Take that off. Um, cleaned it up with a toothbrush. <laughs> this is going to annoy me, hang on. Let's get rid of that. Cleaned it up with a toothbrush. Blew it off with a, one of those things, a heat gun. Um, I've also masked off this little end here. There's a, I don't know why it's there, I think it's just a, um, I don't even know what, I don't know. Maybe when your taillights are on you can open the boot and it gives a bit more light. Um, look, at the end of the day it was fine the way it was. I'm just trying to get this off, I've cut my fingernails and I can't get it off. There we go, oh, I've got most of it. Um, but I haven't done the outside. There we go. Isn't that nice? And look, at the end of the day, that's going to suffice. It'll be fine. This is the outside of it, and that's the bit you see. The bit you don't see is all the silver stuff here, which of course Ford did that when they painted the insides. They didn't mask anything off. Um, look, it doesn't look that good, but I'm inclined to leave it. I don't think there's going to be any benefit from painting this. It, it should be fine. That's the bit you see there. You can just armor all that or whatever. But I think we'll leave it at that for that part. If you know what I mean. I think that's going to be fine. And look, it would have been fine before because you couldn't see through um, the lenses. The only clear part is a bit in the centre, and of course that's got that trim there. So I'm going to put this for this. I'm going to put this to it. So I can't even talk today. I'm going to put this to the side for now and start on something else. And I refer to the surrounds. I've got the dogs here. Hello, dear. How are you going? Hey, that was when I, everyone wants to talk to me when I turn the camera on. Oh, there she is. Hello. Hello, Cleo. This is the one that barks all the time when I'm trying to talk. Don't you? Hmm? Let's talk about taillights. Most people are here to see taillights, not dogs. All right, so we've got these two surrounds here. This one's pitted. It's all lumpy and bumpy. Probably because it's been wet for a long period of time. So I'm not going to use that. But I will use this one. It's dull, but I can bring it up. So I'll just fire that off onto that newspaper which I was trying to get rid of before and just have a little bit of a look at how how block that is and how easy it is going to be it's got a bit of preps on it but it's all good and look you would normally do this sort of thing I mean I'm going to get polish in there and paint doesn't like polish but it doesn't matter because I can just wax and grease it oh that'll be fine That'll come up. So I'll go around, I'll do that, then I'll wax and grease it, get rid of those scratches, shh, mask it up and paint it, and it should be good. I'll just have a look in here. There's, you do see this edge a bit, I think. What are you talking about? Hey? Eh? I'll keep talking. 
What do you want to talk about? Hey? You're making all sorts of noises, but I don't know what you want. So I've just got this, um, I'm not going to go into any great length of detail with this. I'm just using a bit of water with a tiny bit of washing detergent. Just the same sort of solution you use to colour sand a car. This is 2000 grit, wet and dry. And I'm just going over the lens, which will flatten it beautifully. Um, and get rid of the scratches so you have a nice matte finish on it. I actually learnt this from watching Chip Foose. And he, um, this is a genuine Ford lens. He was cutting off the lettering. Uh, with a razor blade then he went over it doing this and buffed it out and that's where I sort of learnt to do it but um, just from watching I think it was overhauling on one of these shows white residue out particularly around that little Ford logo there and I think that's going to do very well look at that can we see the reflection cool oh, I've missed a bit I always do this there's a lot of clarity there but not there so I'll just buzz over that again it's got the um, buff turned down because I don't want it to nick off on me and go next door but I reckon she'll be right. I might even wash this again, actually, get all that residue out. That's cool. It's better on this side, though. This is a bit more, I think. Just the top. Hang on. That is the right hand side, the top there. So that should go. I think that one goes in first. Does that go in there? Yep, where's the reverse light? Where's the reverse light there? That should all be good. There's a, a light, a reflector. This one goes in here. Like that, but it's got a gasket around it, which we have. Somewhere here. I'm doing this a bit prematurely. And this should go like that. Right then, so I've got um, my tail lights, they're miscellaneous. Tail light screws. But whatever the case, we need to be careful when we pull this down that we don't crack this back housing by screwing it down just gingerly, bit by bit, to lower it, if you know what I mean. Because we could do more harm than good if we just bang into it. These little fellas here, which are all laser cut, they're brilliant. And that should just slide over and fit perfectly, which it does. Oh, yes, this is good. Whatever the case, I can straighten that out later, and of course we just put these little guys on here until we're ready to fit them. So there we have our nice right hand tail light and I'm very happy with that. Still that's all factory. I haven't touched that and I've left the silver on the back because I don't think that matters and that's what Ford did anyway but I'm happy with that. Delighted. All right a couple of bits uh, for the car which I want to talk about. Of course, we've got a packet of loom ties which we can use. We've got the fabric tape. I've got another two rolls of that which I use on the Plymouth. I'm going to wrap this wiring in fabric. I'm not going to use normal electrical tape because it does get that gummy, horrible, slimy residue that um, sort of maintains behind it. Um, the H4 connectors for the headlights. Of course, this loom was originally Fairlane and I've now got the GX4 light. So I know it's going to be single light, it's going to be original. Just need to get some for the parkers and I can wire all of that up. The top and bottom radiator hoses, which are unique to 5.8 engines. It doesn't say any about 4.9s on there, particularly this one. Um, I don't know the reason why, because they both use cross flow radiators, the same water pumps, the spigot on the radiator that they attach to, I think, is the same. The only difference in the cooling system between those two engines, I think, 
um, is the three core radiator as opposed to a two core on the 302. So I don't know. I think they're both the same. I think that's hogwash. But at the end of the day, if there is a slight difference with them, we can accommodate that. New Jubilee clamps, which I realised I've got a stack of these here anyway. That's the washer pump. Um, here comes a huge truck. And it's knackered. But I've kept it. I always keep old pieces before I get new ones. So that when the new ones arrive, I can compare them. Um, that way. What's that truck thing off? That's huge. You should see the machinery on the back of it. Wow. Um, Temp sender. Um, for the Cleveland, of course, the one that's on there at the moment is for the engine stand. So I'll take it off and I'll put this in. Correct, gas tapered thread. These normally have a push-on type connector. This is going to have two. They're not even 3 16th. Oh, they might be 3 16th. I don't know what thread that is, but I've just got two nuts that'll fit on there. And I'll use a, a sort of an eye terminal. With... That's uh, the correct temperature sender for it. The idle up solenoid or anti-diesling solenoid, whatever you want to call this thing. Um, this was really, really dirty, and I've just used Scotch Brite, which is my favourite stuff. I use a lot of stuff on Scotch Brite, just to give it a sort of a rotational clean. Of course, what we'll do then is we'll just put a bit of masking tape over the end and down here and lick over it with a bit of clear. You can see where the label was, it's not quite done yet, and that'll preserve that sort of finish. Then I'll put it on the car, and it's got its original connector, which is all good. Side rubbers for the radiator, got to get top and bottom. I think that's the bottom one, I don't know and shocker i put one shocker in which was dead easy because i've got the guards on you can just reach around the wheel and put them on it's really good belts of course and that's where we're up to now although i did forget to mention this thing and of course i'm a fan of big clive and uh, what he does with electronics and so forth this is the what he calls a spudger and i didn't know what a spudger was i thought it was scottish slang for spatula or something i wasn't sure but it is actually called a spudger and it's um, spring steel, very thin. Really good for clock lenses, um, just little odds and ends. You know, getting if you do end up getting things like this, stickers for your wheel centers and you decide they suck and you put them on, of course you would use that to just get them out and you're all good. This, what I didn't realize, is actually made for flicking lenses and so forth out of iPads and iPhones and all this sort of stuff. So that's actually what it's made for which I didn't know, but they're only about 10 bucks. Really, really handy, of course. That goes hand in hand with some of the other tools I use, which of course is a, a very good spatula I've had for years. I always use that with fillings, uh, fine filling anyway. The bone, that's actually a Volvo service tool, which is great for flicking out dashes that are clipped in and all that sort of stuff. It doesn't scratch or mark anything up. That's actually, did I mention? A Volvo service tool. And of course that, which I bought as a, as like a butter knife spatula. But yeah, it's handy having that sort of kit because you can always use it. I've decided, um, not sure, pardon me, not sure if um, I said it in the other video. I've decided to go with black top shock um, brackets just because I've got the anodized ones on the XW and I think you can sort of overkill the anodized stuff. At the end of the day, if the black ones don't look any good, which I know they will, I can always change them out again. The, um, the black ones are the original ones that came with the car. They're on the sort of mangy carpet inside. Oh gosh, that is off. I'm going to pull these off square. And um, they didn't plate well. They were sort of, instead of being nice like that, they were sort of pitted, but they look like black. I'll just push these rubbers up. They've got little protrusions there. And um, just pop them through. And stick them in the spring saddle. That we can just reach around without the guard there and just put sort of put them on. Although camera's a bit in the way, I'll try and do it. It's a bit fiddly. There we go. That's in. The back one might be a bit of an issue to get in. I might try. I thought um, before I just used an extension, which made things a bit easier. Oh no, that's easier. That's just negotiating the nut. It's a nylock nut, so I can just. Flick it round, as I always say, mechanics feel better with their hands than they can see most of the time. There we go, that's in. I can just reach around with a spanner, a socket. And just leave them true and centered at the top. So I'll get them in the correct thing. And of course we can just tighten them up with a the ratchet. I'm not going to tighten this down because it's just 
I've only just painted it, so I'll let it let it sort of sit there to dry and come back to it. But basically all we're doing is just pushing it down over those and putting the nuts and bolts back in, nuts and washers back in. And so these can just be put away for a future project or whatever. Alrighty, so I'm just going to remove, we have got the right size spanner. Yep, like that. I'm going to move these TBS switches, TBS being thermal vacuum switches. The This is for the back advance on the distributor, this one. And I'm going to plumb it the same as the XD, even though the XD's got a different engine. And of course, this one on some cars is for EGR. But the, um, oh, here we go. The XD has the 3 port one here and it's got a, a hex type blank in there, which I want to put that in. I just want it to look as factory as I can get it to look. Um, but I've got a dilemma because I've got the little plastic manifold, rubber manifold thing that goes on. But I can't find two of the little joiners, so we'll leave that one empty. And put the 3 port one in there. And while we've got a spanner in our hand... We'll take this out too. This is the temp sender for the um, the engine stand. I'm using the spanner the wrong way. There we go. This is the temp sender for the engine stand. I've got the proper one for the car or for the engine. You'll see I've got Teflon tape on these. You don't need to. It's a habit. And these things rely on a good earth to go between the body of the sender and the block. Now. Being a tapered gas thread, they're going to cut through the Teflon anyway, so you still want to get that earth. You can get a multimeter, which I'll do in a moment, and check for continuity. Anyone who's seen the Plymouth videos I've done will see that I've done that, but or I've showed it in the past, if you know what I mean. So I'll take that out. Here it is. This is the proper Cleveland one. Again, I've put a couple of nuts there for obvious reasons. So I'm just going to put that in. It just looks... A little bit tidier without adapters and stuff like that. It just always looks better. If you can get the right kit. And so we've got that in. We've got the TVS in. This will put the little hex blank in if we can find it. It looks better than a big brass blank, which is what Ford never had. Of course, I'm just taking tape off this. Whenever you wrap tape around things like this, it can be horrendously difficult to get off. I always wrap it round so it's not on top of itself, if you know what I mean. So that's the idle up. Let's have a bit of a... A clear coat we can I've taped that so there's still nice free movement with it this does work I've tried it put the boot back on and you know maybe maybe a little bit of very fine amount of transmission fluid or even olive oil whatever you want armor or whatever just to freshen up the rubber a little bit and that can go on the carburetor we'll put that on in a moment too I'm just picking stuff up off the bench and putting it on just as it's quite easy to do it that way and also clears the bench of course, we're using the OEM type hoses, and these are just going to sit here. There's a way to put these on. I think it goes, there we go, that way. And they just fit the contour of the bottom of the pump so well. Double check, check the other side, make sure we haven't got it wrong. No, that's just no way. I'll take that label off. And this is a good idea when you take these sorts of things off to file them. I always put this stuff in the file of the car. On a piece of paper, just in a plastic envelope, just so that next time we need a hose, we know exactly what the number is and you're not relying on a parts guy to tell you. Because there have been mistakes like that, which isn't their fault. Because they're dealing with stuff that's sort of post 2000, not 1977. I'll try and get this off. Jeez, I'm not winning this, am I? Here we go. And uh, yeah, we can. We can uh, keep a record of every part. And this car's made of mostly brand new stuff. So I'll keep that. <coughs> Pardon me, that can, we can trim it up and look nicer, but I'll keep it just for the re sake of reference. And I'm not going to be overzealous with the tightening of this thing because I um, will most likely have to take it out when I get a radiator. But I've also got to take the rock covers off. These are the gaskets from the... Um, junkyard engine I did and I reused because I kept taking them off to check if there was oil up there and all this sort of stuff so these look a little bit damp that doesn't matter I can just I've got the new gaskets that came with the rest of the engine gasket kit um, 
So I can just plonk those on. I don't ever use screwdrivers with these sorts of things. I just use a quarter inch driver with an eight mil socket. I like to move these around so that they are easy to get to, yet they're not going to interfere with anything. And a bit of belting. So we could use all new belts. I'll put it this way so I can read it. And again, I'm not going to be too tight with this because this, um, what's that thing called? Power steering pump. Not power steering pump, sorry, the, um, the clutch for the fan is going to need to be replaced. I've, I've got another one on order at the moment. I'm just sort of sorting through belts. That's the, um, an old power steering belt at Daco, which I'll eventually put that in the boot of the XC. This is a new alternator one, which I'm about to put on. I've just found this. Dad bought this in 1979. It's a new, it's never been on a car. It's a new old stock Motocraft JB404, which is the same as the alternator belt. So that's a little bit precious to me. I might keep that. The packaging's, this is from kicking around in the boot of the car for 30 years. Oh, I've got a message. Let's pull that out. I have to move the camera again. Sorry about this, guys. Oh boy. As I said, I'm not going to be too fussed about the tightness of this because it's all got to be loosened anyway. Just zip those up a little bit. Well, I think of it, I'm just going to put this on, hold up solenoid, anti-dieseling, I don't even know what they call them on these, Clevos have a habit of running on anyway, and um, you know the mentality when you used to get these cars cheap in the 80s, and the 80s was just a decade of the worst decisions, and I don't know how many times I heard people saying, oh, you know, you'd say, you look at the car and it's nice and original and say, gee, that's nice. And so oh, I'm just going to chuck all the pollution crap, you know. And um, they would throw out some of this stuff, which is really hard to get now. And has nothing to do with anything, really, in terms of EGR or whatever. But the best thing to do is just leave it standard. There's no hassles there. That is so wrong. I might have to... That's been bent, I think. I'll look into that anyway, but look, I'm not too worried. This paint's really soft. You can see my fingerprints in there. But I think that will, um, this is enamel. And so it'll, before it dries, it'll sort of, that'll come out. That's the hope anyway. Come on, down you go. Fruit. Oh man, I've just mucked it up. Ugh. Oh, yuck. No, I've just fried it. Damn it. What do you do when you're impatient? That's not uncommon for me to make a mistake like that. Oh, look, I'll just leave that. I'll nip it up later. I've just I've ruined the finish on it, though. But what do you do? Look, it's still too wet. I'm just going to undo this. I didn't tighten it fully. And I'll just... Um, I'll just... Oh, I'll just tighten it. Just so I've got a bit of clearance there, but it's further, further away from the exhaust. So that's cool. So now I've just got to join the, the low pressure, but I've got to drill into the radiator support to do that. All right, I've made a couple of mistakes with this car. One is that I've got the heater tap too low and sort of too far in. I don't think it's going to be a problem. Might have to move, but don't really want to because I don't want to re-drill it. Um, the original holes, I didn't see them. The guy welded them up, and that was probably the only thing in the car he welded well because you know, he ground it back and I couldn't see. Now this is Holden heater hose. You can get the right Ford stuff. Uh, but at the end of the day, it doesn't matter. It's the same sort of deal. It's a Mackay hose, which is a good one. To suit a 4.25 litre, I don't think it matters much. But the normal way these are rooted, I think, is, I'm just going to use this as a pointer. This here, there's two, there's two, there's an inlet and an outlet. I think that's the outlet for the engine. that sort of goes through into the water pump here. No, it's not. Into the heater tap here 
into the core, out of the core, and then returning down to that one down there somewhere, down there. I think that's how they're rooted. I might check on the XD before I go any further. Hang on a minute. Right, okay, so this one here, oh, that goes straight into the core. And the one on the way, oh, hang on a minute. No, maybe I'm right. Well, this is going to turn this way. So the impeller's going to go that way. So one would think, no, that must be drawing on it. So it pushes up through here, goes into the radiator, yeah. Oh, well, maybe, um, oh, that's all right. That's actually good. What's this off? XCXD. Oh, yeah, I've got the right hose on there. Didn't use holding hose on there. I would have replaced that years ago. Hang on a minute. And this is like mine. That's as hard as a rock. Um, oh, and that's the type of bottle I want, too. For the XC. I'm going to get ready to look for one. And the other thing while I'm looking at this is that's the blank I want. See, this is blanked off. And the three-port TVS is here. Of course, that bottom one goes to manifold vacuum. The centre one goes to the distributor and the top one goes to the right hand most port on the carburetor. I was actually prepared to plumb this the wrong way, just to keep the appearance how I wanted it. I'm going to plug that onto there. The reason I want to do it like this, actually, is so that I can keep it looking um, tidy. I didn't want the exit from this tap sort of going around like that, right on top of the engine. I want to keep it tight by using one of those right angle things and then bring this over and down there. <laughs> In a neater fashion than that, of course. There's a, um, a bracket somewhere. Where's the bracket? Oh, it's on the boot of the, on the bottom of the thing. And then, of course, these things can hold it in the right, or the right trajectory, so. But this isn't going as well as I wanted. Normally when things go wrong and I start murdering parts, I normally quit and go inside. But a lot of this isn't, it's not strictly speaking, my fault. I'm wide awake and I feel confident doing it, but... We do get to the stage when we're doing these sorts of things that we start making mistakes. And I'm the worst one for doing it. Because I think actually this thing I'm putting on now, this hose retainer, is XWXY. I think it was off that car there. It was in the, um, I don't know why I didn't put it back on though, but I wanted to keep, I want to keep this tidy so I can get to the oil filler. But, um, hmm, I don't know. I don't know. I don't think I'm doing a particularly good job with it, but we can buy new ones of these. It's just the aluminium strap. This has been kicking around. It's another part that I found at Mum's house before she moved that I had in the nineteen <laughs> had in the nineteen eighties. But you know what? Rather than just buying all new stuff, we can reuse that. That looks nice and dandy. And um, I'll try and put that toward the bottom somehow and strap that in. Oh, that does fit. That'll do it. Maybe I've got that too tight. I'm not all that happy with that. I think that looks terrible, actually. It just doesn't quite look right. So, I'm not going to use this. The, um... It's just too tight on the hoses. I don't like it. I also want to push down a bit, so I'll use a longer one there. So, I can't really do an awful lot um, in addition to what I've done. I need to get a bracket for that, which I told you about. Uh, this thing here, I need a right angle vacuum part for the EGR that sort of plugs in like that. The factory one looks like a rubber elbow. I have got some right angle fittings here, but I haven't got the right size vacuum hose to go in it. So that's slightly larger there and then that'll fit over the four mil stuff. So I'll have to do something like that. Uh, not sure. I've also got to, um, I've got this and there's a bit of cleaning up. That's a little manifold thing for the TVS switch. That's what they use from the factory. It's a bit dirty. It can be cleaned up. It's all good. Uh, missing one of these things, but I'll Pretty sure I've got another one around. I've got the two port one somewhere, but I can't find it. So that has to go there to sort of give it that um, that nicer look. Of course, there's a few other bits and pieces that um, are necessary to put on. I've got to put the choke, um, what do you call it, the heat riser things that I made up, which, as I said before, I doubt they'll be effective, but it'll at least block that port off. And of course, I found this. I've got a good one of these. It goes underneath the air cleaner. Um, which ports off to the, uh, what do you call it, the little thermostat for the snorkel bell. 
um, and of course I've got the other pieces that go up here to the side as well, the air cleaner. So I've got all that, but I do need some supplies. I need some slight lines of vacuum, vacuum hose. I'm going to say vacuum cleaner. I need this plug. Need a few other bits and pieces. I want to get the um, the XY dual horns, and I'll put those there, and that way I can space where I put the washer bottle, which is in bleach at the moment. And once those two are in, then I can sort of route the power steering, low pressure hose. I want to see how that's going to go. That's the most important part. But I want to see how it, how it's all going to fit together. So, you know, I'll do all that too, and of course put the cooler on. But I'll quit for today. I think I've had enough now. So, I'll come back out tomorrow, time permitting. I don't think we're going out tomorrow. I'm not sure what's going on then. But anyway. We'll be back. I might even get another right angle bit just to make it tidy so I can curb the, the canister and the um, vent tube and go to the air cleaner, although I am a bit, um, I don't know, disappointed, I guess. I put a, um, the air cleaner I made up for the XW, because the air cleaners for these things are just made out of parts, and the one for the XW is actually the correct XC one with the two holes in the side. One, of course, for the engine breather, and one for the canister, but, um, well... I uh, didn't want to repaint that one, so I didn't, I just left it, so I've not yet decided what I'm going to do in terms of um, rectifying that for this car, but um, oh, look, at the end of the day, I'll figure something out, bits and pieces like that are the sort of thing you look at later when you get the bulk of the big stuff done, but um, Nip this shocker down. You got to hold the centre of it so it doesn't spin. But I've got to get some rear shocks too, actually. There we go. Oh, good. Right. Well, um, started doing some wiring and working out where I'm going to put everything. I use masking tape to sort of plait bits off like that, and then of course undo it as I wrap. And this was originally vinyl wrapped, or at least I did it, or vinyl tape wrapped if you like. I'm using the fabric wrap like I did on the Plymouth. I've got this under here where it's meant to go, although I think I might have to secure it to a shocker tower thing or something. I'm just worried about the hinges, that's all, and the way they come down, so I need to look at that. Um, wipers, of course, and I'm, I'm going to take the wiper motor out again because the um, actuator rod um, thing was, um, I didn't clean it very well. Neutral start switch is down here for the automatic, and of course, we've got the manual loom. It's just got a bridge between two of them and two wires off to the reverse light switch. I can stick that in there. And of course, there's a, a take-up, which I've got stuck, for the oil pressure, oil sending unit, sorry. So I like to put, because it's in an area at the back, there's probably a little bit of heat there. I'll just put some tubing over that. Uh, moving to here. Now, this is obviously, I've rooted it a different way. That's the starter feed. Um, from, for the solenoid. This doesn't use a clap of this car, it's using a Bosch. So I'll get that 7mm convoluted tube, run it down behind the steering box and across to the starter motor so I can keep it a, as far away from that um, manifold as I can. Um, going to go to J-Car, see if I can get some yellow shrink tubing. And I'll cut that terminal off there. Wrap that in new yellow shrink tubing just so it looks fresh because I don't want a new loom and a new looking engine and all this with, um, you know, a dirty cable like that. That's not going to cut it. So we'll do that. Um, this car was, or the loom, pardon me, was from a Fairlane, and it had two separate lots of headlights. Obviously they've got, there's one over here, it's probably easy to see here. They've got um, a four headlight front, so you can see a socket down there and a socket up here, so I can cut all that and, and uh, reuse it, or rewire it the way I want to. Of course this, plug here is the same type of plug I think that the XD has on the coil and if that's the case I'll use it and make it look all legit. Um, as for engine wiring there's only one at the back which goes to the oil sender. This will be wrapped and it'll come down to the alternator and sort of come up to the uh, the coil and also the choke coil and temperature sender which is buried under there somewhere. Yeah, there it is. So that's what we're up to at the moment. Once this is wired, I can sort of clip it. I've got it sort of clipped there with one of those loom things, and that's where the guy welded it. I didn't um, try and drill it out. I'll just do that after, and I'll secure it all so it's all nice and functional. Um, but engine bays, to me, are probably one of the more important parts of a car resto. I take sheer delight in looking at them. Um, distributor, of course, is temporary. 
that was one uh, point, one that I used on the uh, engine for the stand, because it's all I had. Uh, of course, I'll get a new one, which will clean that up. I still haven't done the XW's one either. It's got a, a dirty looking um, vacuum on it, but uh, yep, yeah, we're getting there. So there you are, part 29, done, dusted, sealed and uploaded. Uh, the next chapter I've already started working on, and Patreon people will get a short video of what's going on in that in the next few days. So thank you very much for watching, drive safely, enjoy your classic, and I'll see you later.